Hi everyone, in this video we learn how to work with Torch Audio. So we learn how to load audio data, do basic transformations with it and save the data again. We also learn how to do resampling, how to do data augmentation. So we apply some audio effects and we learn how to do feature extraction. So now let's get started. All right, so first let's have a look at how we install Torch Audio and we can do it the same way as we are installing Torch and Torch Vision. So we can either say pip install Torch Audio or we can say conda install Torch Audio. And one thing I want to mention is that right now Torch Audio is not supported on M1 Max, but for this we can just use a Google Colab like I'm using today. So in there it works just fine. And then I also want to mention that they have pretty Pretty good official documentation so the code that I'm showing today is inspired by the official docs and I will put the link in the description if you want to check this out for even more information and then I also want to mention that we have a github repository where we upload most of the code to our YouTube videos so I will upload the um, collab from today in there as well and yeah so now let's have a look at how we can work with torch audio so first we import torch and also torch audio and then we print the versions to see if everything is working fine so yeah in our case everything is installed correctly then we also import a few other helper modules so we are also going to work with the requests module to download some audio files and here I have different URLs to audio files that are uploaded to S3 buckets. So what I'm doing here is I create this um, folder, the assets folder, and then I have a helper function that will um, call this URL. So it will say request.get URL, and then it will write the content of this URL into a file. So this will basically download the files and store them locally. So if we run this and then have a look at our folder structure in our collab, then here we find this assets folder and in there you should find four different files. So for example, we have an mp3 file and then we have three WAV files. So this is working. And now first let's have a look at how we can query audio metadata. So we can do this on either downloaded files or also on file like objects. For example, if we use the URL and use the requests module to get this URL and then we can get the file data by saying response.raw. So this is not yet downloaded, but we can still get the metadata. So we can say torch audio.info and then we pass in this file like object. So this is the raw data. And then we might have to specify the format. So in this case, we have to say this is in the WAV format. And now let's run this and have a look at how this looks. So we can see it fetched um, this many bytes. And here we see the metadata. So we have a audio metadata object, and then we can see the sample rate, the number of frames, the number of channels, the bits per sample, and also the encoding method. So yeah, we can do this on file like objects and we can do the same on downloaded files. So this is the path to a downloaded file in here. And for this, we can simply say torch audio.info and we don't need to specify the format. So now if we run this, then we should see the same information as here. So yeah, this is working fine. Then let's have a look at how we load audio files. So for this, we can say torch audio.load and then we pass in the file name. And this will return two things that we can unpack here. So this will return a waveform object and a sample rate. So the sample rate is just an integer and the waveform object is a PyTorch tensor and the values are normalized in the range minus one to plus one. And it has this size and the first um, number is the number of channels. And then we have the number of frames. So a audio file can also have uh, multiple channels. So you will see this later. So yeah, now we have loaded this. So we get the waveform and the sample rate. 
And then here I have a little helper function to play the audio file. So for this we use Iron Python display and then we can import audio and display. And we can convert our um, tensor to a numpy array. And then here, like I said, the waveform.shape is in the form number of channels and number of frames. So we can unpack this. And then we simply say we display the audio. And now if we run this, then we see this little button here to play the audio. So now I can hit play. I had that curiosity beside me at this moment. So yeah, this works. Then let's also plot our data. So here I define two helper functions, plot waveform and plot spec gram. So here we plot the spec to gram. And for this, we use matplotlib. So I'm not going to go into detail here, but you find the code on GitHub. So we need to extract the number of channels and the number of frames. Then we need to calculate our time axis. So here we divide by our sample rate. And then for the waveform, we can simply use axis.plot. And for the spectrogram, we can use axis.specgram. So this makes it pretty easy in matplotlib to plot this. So now if we run this, we define these two function and functions. And now let's um, call the plot waveform function. And this is how the waveform looks like. So here you can see our audio signal. And now let's also run the plot spec gram function. So here we see the spectrogram. Now let's have a look at how we save data again. So for this, we can say torch audio.save. Then we need to specify a path or the file name. Then we pass in the tensor object, so our waveform. Then we also pass in the sample rate. And then we could use optional parameters. For example, we could specify the encoding, then the bits per sample. So by default, this is 32. And we could also change the format. So for example, we could use um, MP3 here. So we could put in MP3 and then also change the file name to MP3. And then it will convert it to another file format. So now if we run this and then have a look at our folder. So yeah, in here now we have our new saved file. And then let's quickly test this again by loading our um, saved file again. So here we load the metadata by saying torch audio.info. Then we say torch audio to dot load and then we can play the loaded file again. So yeah, here we see the metadata. Here we now see we have bits per sample is only 16. And the encoding is also what we specified here. And if we run this, then it should still sound similar. I had that curiosity beside me at this moment. Yeah, so this works. Now let's have a look at how we resample audio data. So we want to resample an audio waveform from one frequency to another. And for this, we could use two different approaches. So we can use torch audio.transforms or torch audio.functional. So here we import both of them. Then we load our um, example file again. And here we have the original waveform and the original sample rate. So I think by default, this is 44,100. So then let's define our new resample rate. So in this case, we want to have 32,000. And then the first approach uses the transform. So here we create a resampler object. So we say t.resample. Then we need to pass in the original sample rate and the new one. And we also give it the data type. And then after having created this resampler, we need to call this. So we can then call resampler with the waveform. And this gives us the resampled waveform. Or the second approach is to use directly f.resample and then again the original waveform and sample rate and the new sample rate. So functional.resample will calculate it on the fly. And with this 
transforms.resample, we pre-calculate a few things. So this could be faster if you want to resample multiple waveforms with the same configuration. Um, but otherwise, both are just fine. And then let's play all the resampled files as well. And let's run this and have a look at how this sounds. So this is the original one. Then here we have the first resampled one. And the second one. And yeah, I think they all sound pretty similar. So in order to find the differences, we have to actually have a look at the data. But yeah, basically this works. And now let's also have a look at some different parameters that we could use for the resampling. So one thing we could pass in is the low pass filter width. So here, the larger the value, the sharper and the more precise is our filter, but then it's also more computationally expensive. So the default filter width is six. And yeah, like I said, we could increase this now for better results. Then we also could use the roll off value. Um, this means a lower roll off reduces the amount of aliasing, but it will also reduce some of the higher frequencies. So here the default is 0 0.99. So for example, here we could use a lower value and say 0 0.80. And then we also could use a different window function. So here, this is the default value, but yeah, here you can play around with different ones. And yeah, for the exact details, I can point you to the official documentation. So there you can find more information about these parameters. Then let's have a look at different audio data augmentation methods. So we have a look at how we apply effects and filtering, how we can add background noise and how we can apply a different codec. So for applying effects, we use the torch audio.socks effects module. And here we have two different options. So we can apply the effects to a file or we can apply the effects to a tensor. And the way it works is that we define different effects as a list. And then we call torch audio.socks.effects.apply effects file. And here we give it a path, so the file name, and then we pass in the effects. And um, yeah, to get a list of all the different possible effects, again, you can have a look at the documentation. Or you could also use torch audio socks effect dot effect names. And if you run this, then you see all the different effects that you can apply. And yeah, so in our case, we want to apply a remix, then a low pass, and we also need to give it the rate. And then here, yeah, we define this helper function get sample that simply a applies these effects to a file and then loads the file and returns the waveform and the sample rate. So here we get the sample from our example wave file. And then we also want to plot this. And then a second option here, we apply effects to a tensor. So again, here we apply different effects. For example, we reduce the speed and we also apply a reverberation. So this gives a dramatic feeling. So now let's run this and then have a look at the different waveforms. So this is the original one and this is the second one. So here, since we applied the reverberation, this also means that now we have two channels. So like I said earlier, so a, a waveform object can have more than one channel. So in our case now, this has two channels and it's also taking a little bit more time. So here we have a little bit more than three seconds because we reduce the speed. So now let's play the audio and have a look at the difference. So this is the original one. And this is the resampled one. Yeah, so I think now we should clearly hear a difference. 
Then let's have a look at how we can add background noise. So we can do this by manually doing some scaling and addition operations with our tensor. So first we load a speech sample and then we also load a sample with some background noise. So both of them are already downloaded in our assets folder. So yeah, we load these two samples and now here we um, basically want to have this in the same shape. So here we take the same number of frames from our speech sample and now we have the same number of frames in our noise sample. And then we plot the noise data and have a look at them. And then we calculate the speech power and the noise power by calculating the norm. So with the order two. And yeah, this is basically the power of our signal. And then here we test different signal to noise ratios. And here you can define different values. So the higher the number, the more clear you should understand the signal. And then what we do here is we calculate a scale factor. So we do this by calculating the signal to noise ratio times the noise power divided by the speech power. And then we can create our noisy speech data by applying these operation to our original tensor. So we can say scale times the speech tensor plus the noise. So we add noise to the tensor and then we divide it by two. And then here again, we want to plot the signal and also play this. So yeah, this is how we add the background noise by applying scaling and then adding the noise. So now let's run this. And then here, yeah, like I said, we also plot the different signals. And then here we have the different signal to noise ratios and the different plots. And yeah, then we can, for example, let's listen to this one. So this has the signal to noise ratio 20. And this is the audio file. So let's play this. I have that curiosity beside me at this moment. Yeah, so now we should clearly hear the background noise, but still should be able to hear the original speech. And yeah, you can play around here with different values for the signal to noise ratio and have a look at how this would sound like. And now let's have a look at how we apply different codecs. So if we scroll down and here we can apply different Codex and this is also pretty simple. So for this we use functional dot apply codec and then we specify the original waveform and the sample rate. And here we can define different codecs. So we define this as a dictionary. And yeah, so here, for example, you could use different formats. Then for some formats, you could also use the encoding and the bits per sample. And then you simply apply f dot apply codec and then we can run this. And then here again, we could um, listen to the different um, applied codecs. So now let's have a look I at this. I have that curiosity beside me at this moment. Yeah, I think that's also pretty straightforward. And yeah, now let's have a look at how we can extract audio features. So in this case, I want to show you how we can extract the spectrogram. So to get the frequency makeup of an audio signal as it varies with time, you can use spectrogram. And for this, we can simply use transform. So T dot spectrogram. And here again, we can use different parameters. And for this, again, I recommend that you check out the official documentation. So we create this object and then we also have to apply this. So we apply the spectrogram to our waveform. And then we have it. And then, for example, here I also defined another helper function to plot this. So now let's run this and see how this looks. And yeah, so this is how the spectrogram looks like. And yeah, these are all the features I want to show you for now. And then one more thing I want to mention is then that um, Torch Audio also has a datasets module. With this, you can very easily download some popular audio datasets, for example, the yes, no datasets. And for this, you simply call torchaudio.datasets and then the name. 
then you can specify a file name and specify download equals true. So this will download this data set and then also load it in memory. And then we can, for example, access the first um, sample. So this again will give us a waveform, then the sample rate and also the label. For example, then we can play this and yeah, then we can work with this. So yeah, now it's downloaded. So now let's play the first sample. Lo, 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 can, 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 can. And yeah, now we can work with this data set. Pretty cool. So yeah, that's all I wanted to show you for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And if so, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, if you want to test the Assembly AI API, then don't forget to grab your free API token using the link in the description below. And then I hope to see you next time. Bye.